Hello, welcome to our lesson today. Today we're going to be learning about letter L and letter L is for Little Online School on the Prairie. I am so excited about all we're going to do today. I'm wearing my bonnet and Sue has her braids and Sue has something else. I think she has a surprise for us. Sue, come on out here. Did you bring a surprise? Sue, is that your fiddle? Well, a long time ago, people would use a fiddle. It's kind of like a violin and they would play and dance and sing. So I think Sue wants to play a song for us. Is that right, Sue? Okay, let's hear your song. down on the carpet if you want to. We're going to start our letter of the day, but thank you for that nice concert. Well, today's letter is the letter L, and the letter L looks like this. This is the uppercase L and the lowercase L. Let's try to write these letters, okay? They couldn't be easier. The uppercase L looks like the number one, and then we're gonna slide out. You can practice too if you'd like to. You're gonna start by making a number one and then slide out just like that. So one and then slide out. That's the uppercase letter L. Now let's try to write that on the handwriting house, okay? So we're just gonna start at the top. We're gonna come down and slide out, down and out down and out, down and out, down and out. That's the uppercase letter L. You can try to write it too, skywrite it. Down and out, down and out. Good job. Okay, so now let's talk about the lowercase L. If you thought the uppercase L was easy, just you wait. The lowercase L is even easier. It's just like the number one. It's just a line straight down. That's lowercase L. It looks exactly like the number one. So let's see what that looks like on the handwriting house. You're going to start at the top just like you did for the big uppercase L and you're just going to Go down to the bottom, down. Just don't slide out, just go straight down. If you didn't know that we were practicing the letters, you might think we were practicing the numbers because lowercase l and the number one look exactly alike. Well, let's talk about what l sounds like. Let me ask you a question. Do you like lollipops? I love lollipops. I love, love, love lollipops. Well, what part of your tongue do you use to eat a lollipop? Do you use the tip of your tongue to lick a lollipop? Well, that's the part of your tongue that you're going to use to make the letter L sound. So take the tip of your tongue and put it on the top of your mouth behind your teeth. And that's how to make the L sound. Uh, can you try? Uh, uh, L says, uh, uh, uh. well, I have something to help us to remember the sound that letter L makes. I brought an old fashioned lantern to class today. This is a super old lantern. A long time ago in the pioneer days, they didn't have a light switch that they could just flip on and off. They had to use something like this to light up their room. So let me show you, I can flip the switch off and the light goes off. I can flip the switch on and the lights back on. But long ago, they would put oil in this part of the lantern 
and there was a wick, kind of like a rope that would stick out right here. And so they would light the rope or wick with a little match and the fire would glow and the lantern would light up the room. So today I thought we would make a lantern to practice the letter L sound. So all you need to do to make a lantern is just get a piece of paper. We're gonna take the paper and we're going to fold it in the middle, hold it like this so that it's long up and down like this. That's called vertical, up and down and then fold it in the middle. You can press it down to make a nice, a nice fold. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut just a little piece off of the top. That's gonna be the handle. See, I just cut a little piece off. Okay, now I'm gonna take the paper that I folded and the side that I folded, not this side because it won't work, but this piece that the side over here that you folded, you're going to cut some, some lines in it. Not all the way, just go up just a little bit. It doesn't matter how many lines you cut. You don't have to cut a lot, just a few, it's fine. So let me show you, I didn't go all the way up. I left some space at the top. Okay, now I'm gonna open my paper back up. And then this is the fun part. I'm gonna bring the two sides to the middle so that they meet. Or I'm gonna bring them together, I guess I should say, so they meet. And then I'm going to tape them. Now you can use glue, but I'm using tape because it's a little bit faster. Glue takes a minute to dry and I wanted to do this in class with you. So let me put a piece of tape on the bottom too. And do you remember that I cut a piece off of the end that was going to be the handle I told you? So I'm just going to take that handle and I'm going to tape it to each side on the top. Okay, let me tape this side. Ta-da! I made a lantern. L says uh, as in lantern. L says uh, uh, uh. Well, let's do some blending today. We know what letter L sounds like. I'm going to need to write the vowels down. So if you know the vowels, will you help me say them? The vowels are good. A, E, I, O, U, A, E, I, O, U, A, E, I owe you, these are the vowels. Well, we're gonna put the letter L with the letter A and we're gonna blend these two sounds together. All right, here we go. L -a, la, 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 nice work. Let's do the next one. Let's take the letter L and let's blend it with the letter E. Remember, E looks like an ear. E says, eh? All right, here we go. Eh, le, le, le. Let's try the letter L with an I. An I looks like an icky sticky lollipop. Eh, here we go. Eh. Le, le. Now let's try letter L with an O. O says ah. Here we go. La, 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 la. Last one. The U sounds like uh, like when you have a tummy ache. Uh. So let's see if we can blend this. La, uh. La, la. Well, you did a great job blending. If you're ready for blending, you can practice these today. That's the first steps to reading. Reading is just blending letter sounds together. So we usually start with two letter sounds. La, le, le, la, la. But if you're not ready for blending, then today you can practice the letter L sound. L says L as in lantern. L says L, L, L. Okay, let's do some math together. A long time ago, the little children that came to class in the pioneer days didn't have paper. 
they didn't have pens or whiteboards. So how did they do their schoolwork? Well, they had chalkboards. They would use the chalkboards to practice their letters or their numbers. Their teacher would come and look at their work and then they could erase the chalkboard and write something else or practice some more. Well, I wanted to make a chalkboard and show you how to make a simple chalkboard that you can use to practice your numbers for today. So I needed a piece of cardboard. So I just took the back of uh, an art pad. It was cardboard. It made a perfect cardboard chalkboard. I just took the back off and I painted it black on one side. I just used regular black paint, not chalkboard paint. I just used regular black paint. And then I used that to practice the numbers. Look at that, it works just great. And if you take a piece of a napkin, and you just wet it just a little bit, it even erases. So let's practice the numbers today. We're gonna to practice one through 10. See if you can remember what the numbers look like and write them on your paper, even if you don't have a chalkboard, or maybe you wanna pause and make the chalkboard and then come back, or just use your paper or skywrite if you want to. But let's practice one through 10. All right, how do you write a number one? We should all know that one because a number one looks like a lowercase l. We did that earlier. So there's a number one. You try it. One. Now let's try to write a number two. Two looks like this. Down and round and out. Can you try? Two. Okay, let's try the number three. Three looks like this. Curve around and round again. There's the number three. Do you want to try? Three. How about number four? Four looks like an L right here. See, looks like an L. And that also looks like a lowercase L. Try number four. Nice work. How about number five? Number five looks like this. Go down, backwards, C, give it a top. Want to try? Good, nice work. How do you write a number six? Hmm, let's see if we can remember. Six curves around and down. That's the number six, round and down. Okay, let's try number seven. Seven is kind of like a slide. Walk out, slide down. Try it. Good job, good job. Number eight is like a snowman, but you're gonna make the uh, letter S and then close it up, close it up. It does look like a snowman. Make the letter S and then close it up, close it up. Okay, let's try the number nine. Number nine is like a ball and a bat. Look at that, a ball and a bat. Okay, finally, we're gonna write number 10. Number 10 is two numbers. It's a one and a zero. One and a zero is number 10. One and a zero, that's number 10. Well, you did a great job remembering the numbers and practicing them. Now let's talk about our color for today. I brought a log to class today. This is a small log. Can you tell what color this is? This log is the color, I hope you can tell, brown, it's brown. Let's sing a song about the color brown. There is a color we all know. Can you guess what it is? B R O W N B R O W N B R O W N. That's how you spell brown. Well, this log can help us practice our color brown, but it can also help us practice a shape because this log is a 3D shape. It's not flat, it's fat. There's a circle on this end and a circle on this end. And then the rest of it is round all the way around, kind of like a can. Do you know what shape this is? It's a 3D shape. Hmm. It's called a cylinder. Can you say cylinder? Very nice, this log is in the shape of a cylinder. And did you know that pioneers used logs to build their homes? This is a great thing that they could use because trees were plentiful, so they would chop down the trees and they would use those stacked one on top of each other to build their homes. 
Well, for social studies today, and social studies is just learning about the world around us, we're going to be learning all about the pioneers. Well, the pioneers were what you call people who decided they wanted to move out west in America. Now, west is one of four directions. There's um, north and there's south and there's east and there's west. And west is the direction that the pioneers wanted to go. They wanted to go out west because there was a lot of land and not a lot of people. And they wanted to have some of that land to build their homes and raise their families on. When they traveled out west, they went in a wagon. Now, this doesn't look like a wagon, or at least not a wagon that you might have, but it is a wagon. It's called a covered wagon because there's a piece of cloth over the top. The pioneers would have to sleep and live in the wagon while they were traveling for weeks and weeks and weeks going out west. The wagon is pulled by horses. Finally, after a long time of traveling, they reached the beautiful land out west. The first thing they needed to do was build a home. Remember, I told you the pioneers would use logs to build their houses. If you look really closely, you can see that this house is made of logs stacked one on top of the other. Something that the women like to do was make quilts. Now I have a quilt behind me. I brought one to class today to show you. A quilt is just when you take lots of pieces of cloth and you just sew them together. But the pioneers didn't want to just stay at home all by themselves and make quilts. They would get together with their neighbors and they would quilt together. This was called a quilting bee. Now, you can go out to the store, to the mall, or even order online the toys that you want, but guess what? The pioneer children couldn't just run to the store or order something for, to play with. They would have to make their toys. This is a corn cob doll. Now, you've probably eaten a piece of corn before. Normally, we eat all the corn off the cob and then we throw the cob away, but not the pioneer children. Sometimes they would use the cob and dry it out in the sun and then cover it with cloth and make a doll or toy out of it. The pioneers loved to read. They read everything that they could find, including magazines and newspapers. They would read the Bible. They loved to read the mail. The mail took a long time to arrive. They didn't get mail every day like we do. They had to get their mail from a mail, a wagon train, or a horse, a rider. So it took a long time for mail to come. But when it did, they would read that letter again and again and again. This is an old-fashioned school book. It's a book that children long ago might have used to learn to read. The pioneers had some pretty cool clothes. I really like this cotton dress that the girl is wearing. She would often wear a bonnet like Miss Kathy's wearing today and an apron. Now the pioneer boys would often wear these things right here that look like a belt. They're called suspenders or they might wear overalls. And on their head, they might wear a straw hat. The straw hat would keep them from getting sunburn when they worked outside doing their chores. Now the children would go to school in a one room schoolhouse, kind of like this one in the picture. There's one room, but lots of children. Can you look really closely and see that there are some really little children? Look on the grass. And then there are some big, tall teenager children too. They all went to school together with one teacher who would teach them all the things that they needed to know. Well, I had a lot of fun today talking about our little online school on the prairie. I hope you have a wonderful day today and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.